Hallelujah. Christ was revealed in the flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. We gather in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. The God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. collect and readings appointed for this day, the baptism of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid hands on them and received the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear now the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the wilderness, Jesus, John proclaimed a baptism of repentance. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of Christ.
May I speak in the name of the living Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do take a seat. Excuse me while I remove a trip hazard. A slightly provocative question. I wonder what do you expect when you come to the church for a service? Do you have an idea of what should happen or what will happen? Is this based on you coming every week or regularly? Is it based on being a member of a church for a very long time? Or have you joined us more recently? Are your experiences based on just one church? Maybe you have only ever come to St. James, or perhaps you've been to lots of churches. Are you into singing hymns? Hopefully round here they are. <laughs> Do you love formality? Or would you prefer less of it, or perhaps even more? And is today matching up to your expectation of what you think a church service would be? I must admit that at this point, I would love to run around with a microphone and ask you all, but perhaps that's not a good idea just now. It is one that I might do in the future when we can. A tutor of mine at Theological College used to ask, what would an alien make of a church service if they just wandered in? He would then give a very funny but very accurate picture of what we must look like to others. And he used to base it on an actual service that we had taken earlier in the day. It made us laugh, of course it did, but it had a very serious point and had us thinking hard about what we do and why, how we use our buildings, our space, our music, everything. An alien, he said, would have no expectation, but be perhaps rather bemused by what was going on. There would be plenty of opportunity for utter confusion and misunderstanding. After all, we sit and we stand and we do them quite frequently. We mostly all face one way, but some of us face the other way. Sometimes we sing or we speak together, sometimes not. Sometimes we all go quiet and look at the floor. And some of us wear slightly strange clothing. And we talk about someone who is God, but also Jesus, and also a son, a father, and a spirit. We don't always explain things. It's as though we are all somehow joined together and we just know what we are doing, maybe, why we are doing, maybe, and there's a kind of an expectation that people will just know. They will know what to do in a service and they will know what we are about. That expectation has stuck with me. And we all have expectations about all sorts of things, and this time of year seems to bring them to the fore. New Year's resolutions, in many respects, are just a way of expressing an expectation, but perhaps they're not always realistic. I am not going to be the size of a model by summer. But looking to the future, and put, perhaps putting the past to one side, looking forward in hope to a time of something that is promised or an opportunity, then maybe there is something positive about an expectation. But often we see expectations as something that are negative. Shakespeare, after all, wrote that expectation is the root of all heartache. And there is the other adage, learn to expect nothing, and then you'll never be disappointed. But I think if we had life with no expectation in it, it would be a bit grey and a bit dull. Expectation is bound so strongly with a very innate sense of hope and of joy, of growing or of changing or of a future. As Christians, 
we have expectations placed upon us by others. It could be how we should behave, or even, dare I say, how we should conduct our services. Perhaps in Weybridge, it's how we expect St. James to be. But some expectations are negative. They're judging or condemning of us, of our behavior or of our attitude. Perhaps unfairly so, but they are made. But there is one overriding expectation, I think, of us as a Christian, that we show our faith and how it makes a difference in our lives. And it's a difference that people want to be able to see, whether they agree with it or not. We are in the season of Epiphany, looking at Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, as he is revealed to his people, as he is revealed to us. We started last week with the visit of the Magi to the tiny child, and then today we leap forward many years to the adult Jesus, being baptised by John, but with people who were filled with expectation being present. John, the somewhat strange and unusual man who had appeared, who preached and spoke and was seen as a prophet, a man who people followed, a man with a very uncompromising message, perhaps even a brutal one, of the need to repent, to put aside one's past, to start again. He is attracting ever-growing numbers of people and they begin to wonder, is he the promised Messiah? Is he the one that has been expected? Is he to fulfill the promises made to God, made by God? They have an expectation, whether it is realistic is different. The expectation is there. And can he fulfill that expectation and their hopes? Well, I suppose the answer is both yes and no. He does fulfill the promises made by God, but only as he points everyone else towards Jesus. He is brutally honest that the Son of God is to come with more power, and he just says, it is not me. He is to come. He is preparing the way. He is getting people ready. People are repenting of their sins. They're being baptized, and they're being told to wait for the one to come. But he is not, I suggest, meeting people's expectations of him personally. They are unknowingly unrealistic. And in John's heart, I wonder, did he know? Was he aware? He knows that his role is to point those to follow Jesus and not him. But did he really know what was to come? God's expectation was placed upon him as it is placed upon us as his followers to keep pointing that way towards Jesus. It's not a small expectation and it's more than we might initially think. It's more than just talking or writing about what we feel. If we are to go and make disciples of others, if we are to find the lost and bring them home, if we are to bring those seeking faith to baptism, if we are to reach out in loving service to those around us, to seek justice for the oppressed, to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, to be a friend to those who are unloved or perhaps even unlovable. If we are to allow our faith to shape our lives and to be a visible witness as to what our faith means to us, we have to share our expectations of each other as Christians in a very unambiguous way with those who are not. 
and if we are to meet that expectation that's placed on us from God, we can only do that by encountering him, by meeting with him regularly, and by checking what our own expectation of that relationship is. Is it realistic? And how do we do that? We pray, not just here on Sundays at 10 a.m., but every day. Pray where we are. Pray about what God wants us to be. Pray for the expectations we find ourselves with or we have. Meet God here as we are about to do in bread and wine. Meet in worship and fellowship with one another and with God. If we are to grow God's church here in this parish of Weybridge, we have to use this time of change at St. James wisely. We have to maybe lay down some expectations of our own, but perhaps take up others. We need to keep our community and our parish together during this strange time with pandemic restrictions and worries about the future. We need to examine ourselves individually and ourselves as a community of faith to understand who we are, where we are, where we'd like to be. How do we get there? We need to be able to embrace our unique identity and perhaps become comfortable with it because we are not always so. Only by being comfortable with an identity can we start to share that in a bigger way with others. Expectations of others on us can be a heavy responsibility, but it also can be a privilege and a joy. We just maybe need to shift our focus a bit. And we must accept that we are all called because of our common baptism. We are all called to reveal Jesus to others, to point the way to him, just because of the light of Christ shining in our lives. Amen. Let us now stand as we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives on our hearts through faith and fills us with love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and for the world and give thanks to God for his love towards us. Let us pray. In this season of epiphany, in this time of revelation, in this time of renewal, of understanding our relationship with God, with Jesus. We pray for all church members worldwide. We pray for their leaders, that they may have true servant hearts. We pray especially for those brothers and sisters in countries where openly practicing faith is complex. We 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. A world with complications of climate change, of the effects of COVID and the pandemic, of economic meltdown, of displaced people, of war, strife and nationalism. We pray for leaders and people of influence that they may behave in transparent ways, honest ways, and with integrity. We pray that people will start to understand they are all connected, and that peoples and countries must be together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of Weybridge, for all who live and work here, for local businesses, schools, nursing homes and places of care. We pray that ways of getting to know our neighbour will be strengthened in this new year and that the small steps started throughout the pandemic of learning who is around you continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are unwell at this time, mind, body or spirit. Those on our parish list and in a moment of quiet, those known only unto us. We pray too for friends and families and those who provide care. For your peace and your strength, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, for those who have lost loved ones. and for those souls who have departed this world recently. And those whose anniversaries of death fall around these days, among whom Tom Chatfield and Ron Gow. Rest eternal, grant unto them, Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. God our Father, you have welcomed each of us into the family of your church. In Jesus, you call us to be his body in this place. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us at this time of uncertainty and change to fill us with vision and energy and faithfulness in prayer that we may be true to our common baptism and bring new life to our parish community. Guide with your heavenly wisdom, all involved in discerning a new rector for this parish, that we may receive the priest you have prepared for your people, ready to serve us with joy, to build us up in faith, and lead us by example in loving obedience to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand?
and to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you, and also with you. Please now share a sign of peace safely. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord be with you.
and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of our Blessed Lady Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, Saint James and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Let us say together the third post-communion prayer on page 14. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I seem to have Sunday school. Have you got something to tell me? What have you been doing today? I'm sure you've been doing something. Have you been doing anything? Come on, Georgia, you're not normally shy. What have you been doing? What have you been doing today? We've been making wells. You've been making wells? Ooh. Right, you're going to say something then? We've been learning about the um, story when Abraham sent um, his servant to um, a city um, a long way away to find a wife for Isaac. We have lots of wonderful pictures, yes? So show everybody your pictures as you leave. They're wonderful. Do you want to stand here and turn around and show your, lift your picture up high? Yep, other way, turn around. People are behind you. <laughs> yep, they're lovely. Thank you. <laughs> it's lovely to have Sunday school back for this year. <laughs> Now, a couple of notices. Um, we are still rather short of people to help with making and serving coffee after the services. And we do want to continue to have coffee. We are doing it in the safest fashion as we can in the hall. We're lucky to have a big hall. So if you could help once a month with making coffee, could you speak to Jill or Elvira, please? We just need a few more people and then it's uh, easier and we know that we can have coffee. But we do definitely have coffee after the service today because I've seen people in there making it. The other thing to say is that we do have a card reader available if you wish to make a donation um, by card after the service. It'll be somewhere near the font with, I'm not quite sure who, Donna today. Thank you. Otherwise, it is a new year, so I wish you a happy new year, and we will see where this year takes us. Would you please stand and bow your heads for God's blessing. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and those for whom you love and pray for, now and unto the ages of ages. Amen.
serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.